Hi there, I am the Reverend Danny Crosby, a Unitarian minister serving congregations in Altrigham and in Ermston in the northwest of England. And I offer this devotion as a balm for the heart, for the mind, for the spirit and for the soul. And it's titled, The Essence of the Spiritual Life, Taking Care of Your Three Millimetres. And this devotion is going to begin with a, with a letter that's taken from a wonderful book titled Letters to Sam, A Grandfather's Lessons on Love, Loss and the Gifts of Life by Daniel Gottlieb. And um, in this, this letter I find the essentials really to, to living the spiritual life, to living spiritually alive. It teaches lessons that we can learn from pain and struggle as well as this suggestion that the essence of freedom in the spiritual life, and in all life, I guess, is responsibility. Or as Daniel discovered, taking care of your three millimetres, something that doesn't sound too complicated, it's quite simple, isn't it? But it's far from easy. So here's the letter, your three millimetres. Dear Sam, an author and sociologist named Frank Abbott has said, Death is no enemy of life. We would have no idea what life was about if it weren't for death. About 10 years before you were born, I went through a terrible time in my life and I had a dream that was a revelation. This was several years after my accident, shortly after your grandmother Sandy and I had left the marriage, sorry. Debbie and Ali had just departed for college and I was, I was home alone and then my beloved sister, who had become my closest confidant, had just been diagnosed with a terminal brain tumour. My heart was in turmoil. Then I developed a bed sore on my buttocks. This is not unusual for someone who sits in a wheelchair all day, but when it happens it can be a nightmare. The only treatment for these sores is to stay out of the wheelchair. So what little independence the wheelchair provides gets taken away. With grief welling up on every side, I visited the doctor. He examined me and said, it's broken. I said, I know. He was referring to the skin, but I was talking about my heart. Too much pressure, he said, meaning my buttocks. I know, I said, meaning my life. Then the doctor saw that the wound was moist. That's an unhealthy sign. It's weeping, he said, using a medical term. I know, I said, but I still wasn't talking about the wound. Finally, he said, you've got to go to bed for 30 days. This was my greatest nightmare. Right after the accident, I imagined that everyone would leave me and I would be home alone confined to bed, with a nurse who was there only because she was being paid. Then upon the recommendation of this doctor, that's exactly what happened. Displaced from my wheelchair, immobilised, I knew I would not be able to do any of the usual things that sustained me. I couldn't see my patients if I couldn't sit up or go into my office. I couldn't get to the radio station for my weekly show. I couldn't drive my van or get around the house by myself. I would have to lie prone, waiting for the wound to heal. How do you know it will take 30 days, I asked. The doctor explained that skin wounds, if they are in a healthy environment, heal at a rate of one millimetre a day. I wondered about wounds to the heart. How could you measure that healing? He gave me a brown patch called duoderm to cover the wound. I told him I was surprised that the wound would be covered. I thought wounds needed oxygen to heal. I, shouldn't the bed sore be exposed to the air? Yes, he said, wounds do need oxygen to heal. But the oxygen is in the blood, not in the air. Everything a wound needs to heal is already in your body, he explained. We just have to get access to those nutrients and let them work. Those woo words stayed with me. If that was the way the body healed, what about the human spirit? Remembering the old prophetic story that tells how infants are born with all the wisdom they need to live, 
I realised that everything we needed to heal our heart's wounds might already be in us too. I went home and went to bed. But the wound didn't heal in 30 days or in 40 or even 50. When it finally did close after about two months, I was elated to get back in my wheelchair. It made me think, how many people feel overjoyed because they can sit in a wheelchair? But then it opened again. I was devastated. Here came the nightmare all over again. I felt as though my spirit was crushed for good. Finally, the doctor and I decided I should have surgery. One night in the hospital, a friend came to visit me. I told her I didn't think I could go on anymore. What I was feeling went beyond despair. It was, it was a loss of hope, of everything I valued, trusted and loved. The pain had become simply unbearable. My friend held my hand and said, Dan, what you are about is more important than who you are. That night I had a dream. I dreamed that God came to me. This was not the God I believe in, the one you read about in the Bible. It was some other God. And when he spoke, he said, I'm going to give you a piece of the universe. Your job is to take care of it. Not make it bigger or better, just take care of it. And when I'm ready, I'll take it back and your life will be over. I looked at the piece of the universe that God was showing me and I saw that it was just three millimetres. Was that all? I could feel my ego begin to rail against this indignity. I'm a, I'm a psychologist. I am an author. I have a radio show. Aren't these things important? Of course, no matter how much I protested, it wouldn't make any difference. My allotment was still and would always be just three millimetres of the entire universe. That was it. But in this dream, I also saw that caring for three millimetres of the universe was an awesome responsibility. A God-given responsibility. Though I had felt I couldn't go on, finally I had to acknowledge that I would have to give back my three millimetres before I was ready. And because at the time of the dream, I had a wound that was healing in millimetres, I knew that my job was to help heal my three millimetres of the universe. Sam, part of the reason I'm at peace with my life is that I take care of the part of the universe I'm responsible for. I haven't made it bigger or better. I haven't changed it, but I have cared for it. Writing these letters to you is just one of the many ways I am tending my three millimetres. What I wish for you, Sam, is what I wish for everybody, to get as clear a sense of what your life is about as I got in that dream. Your three millimetres is not much in terms of area, but I hope you will feel the gratitude and joy that I feel, having been given that much to attend. Love, Pop. Wonderful, isn't it? Wonderful. I'm glad... I've got the chance to share it. I finally found something. I came across it a couple of years ago when searching, when I found some resources for my Colours of Grief um, support group. The piece hit me hard at the time. It had a powerful impact on my heart and my soul and I wanted to share it in worship, but I never found the right time. It's, it's far too long for a reading. And then last Sunday, um, as I sat enjoying the 200th anniversary service at Norcliffe Unitarian Chapel in style, as stories were shared of the congregation over its time and the congregation's mission, and this idea of faith and works that was expressed throughout the service, it, it came back to me, this piece. And it got me thinking about my spiritual beliefs, how I express what I believe in my spiritual life, how I live my spiritual life. And I think in this piece by Daniel Gottlieb, what I see as the essence of my spiritual life as shared by him and his letter to his grandson, Sam. Beautiful. It's a touching, personal and deeply inspiring collection of letters, letters to Sam by Daniel Gottlieb to his grandson, Sam. There is clearly a deep connection between the two of them. They share a common bond, which is more than just unconditional love. They will both be goes way beyond blood actually they both be considered different from what we might call the norm in life daniel is quadriplegic following an accident 
And he's learned so much though from his disability, which he shares in so many ways in his work and in these letters actually. And his grandson Sam was diagnosed with autism at just 14 months old. Daniel wrote the book as a way of offering help and advice to Sam to ease his attempts at navigating life in which it seems he would always be dependent on other people to live. It is a celebration of the worth and dignity of all people, it seems to me. It teaches, it can teach, help teach actually people that no matter what happens to them, our bodies, our minds or our souls remain whole. It's not sugar-coated pain and how we live with pain is a constant theme throughout the book, as are the fears that come with this pain. An example being Daniel's reaction to being diagnosed with the bed sores. He describes his fear of being abandoned, a real fear that he's experiencing as his wife has left, his sister has been diagnosed with terminal cancer and his children have grown up and left home. And yet, somehow throughout all this, he holds on to his humour too, as well as this need to help others. The work, his work, his taking care of what it is to take care of. It comes through, it shines through brightly. It's inspiring. The letter and the whole book offers a way to live spiritually alive. The essence of which he talks about is responsibility. Daniel discloses in the letter that all of us have our own little patch of life that we're all responsible for our little patch. Not necessarily to grow it or improve it, to make it better, but to take care of it, to nurture it. The point is to take care with love and with gratitude and with joy and to, and to make grow from it something beautiful, from our own being, if you like. It's about living spiritually alive. This is a book about faith and doing what is ours to do in life. It, and it brings to mind those words from the book of James Faith without works is dead. It's about Our faith is about how we live, what we do, the things we give back to life. And it begins by taking care of what is ours to take care of. Not anybody else's, but to be responsible for what we have been given. I love how Daniel describes how all that he needed to heal was already there within him too. That it's already there, take care of it. That the key is to take care of that, to be responsible for his three millimetres. As he wrote, the doctor explained. Yes, he said, wounds do need oxygen to heal, but the oxygen is in the blood, not in the air. Everything a wound needs to heal is already in your body, he explained. We just have to get access to those nutrients and let them work. Daniel continued, those words stayed with me. If that was the way the body healed, what about the human spirit? Remembering the old prophetic story that tells how infants are born with the wisdom they need to live, I realised that everything we needed to heal our heart's wounds might already be in us too. So true. Isn't that so true? Everything we need is already here. We just need to learn to take care of it, to nurture it, and to make best use of what is already here. What is ours to be responsible for, to make the best of that. But even if we do that, sometimes, no matter what we do, things still go wrong. Sometimes things can appear to improve and get better in life, and we take care of our patch and it seems to grow and then all seems lost again, it all goes wrong again. How do we stop ourselves from being dispirited? As Daniel himself wrote, I went home and went to bed, but the wound didn't heal in 30 days or in 40 or 50. When it finally did close after about two months, I was elated to get back in my wheelchair. It made me think how many people feel overjoyed just because they can sit in a wheelchair. But then it opened up again. I was devastated. Here came the nightmare all over again. I felt as though my spirit was crushed for good. Finally, the doctor and I decided that I should have surgery. I hear something here powerfully in the wisdom of faithful, faith and acceptance, really. Faithful acceptance, if you like. And he continues. We see his real lesson in the letter. 
his whole philosophy for him and for his grandson that he's sharing with his grandson soon. A universal lesson, the key, I would say, to the spiritual life. We hear it now. There's something of faith and works of, of the spiritual life, of making the most of what is ours, of being responsible for what is ours. This is our gift. I hear so powerfully the wisdom of Forest Church here too, and his mantra, one what you have, do what you can, be who you are. What came to Daniel in that moment of utter despair when he felt he could go on no longer in his dream, as Daniel wrote. One night in the hospital, a friend came to visit me. I told her I didn't think I could go on anymore. What I was feeling went beyond despair. I was, it, was at, it was a loss of hope, of everything I valued, trusted and loved. The pain had become simply unbearable. My friend held my hand and said, Dan... What you are about is more important than who you are. That night I had a dream. I dreamed that God came to me. This was not the God I believe in, the one you read about in the Bible. It was some other God. And when he spoke, he said, I'm going to give you a piece of the universe. Your job is to take care of it, not make it bigger or better. Just take care of it. And when I'm ready, I'll take it back and your life will be over. The key he discovered is to take care of his piece of the universe, his three millimetres. This was his responsibility. This was Daniel's work and it came to him faithfully when he was in utter despair. Again, as he wrote, but in this dream, I also saw that caring for three millimetres of the universe was an awesome responsibility, a God-given responsibility. Though I had felt I couldn't go on, Finally, I had to acknowledge that I would have to give back my three millimetres before I was ready. And because at the time of the dream I had a wound that was healing in millimetres, I knew that my job was to help heal my three millimetres of the universe. Sam, part of the reason I'm at peace with my life is that I take care of the part of the universe I'm responsible for. I haven't made it bigger or better. I haven't changed it, but I have cared for it. Writing these letters to you is just one of the many ways I am tending my three millimetres. Incredible, don't you think? And I think the key for all of us is to find whatever our three millimetres are and love and care for those three millimetres. And when our time is up, to give back whatever life has lent to us in this life that was lent to you in this life that is lent to you. Now, whatever our three millimetres may be, it's for each of us to discover ourselves. It doesn't have to be anything big or glorious. By taking care of what is close at hand sounds like the embodiment of faith and works to me. What the ground at our feet, taking care of what is here now. What's in us, what's deep within each of us to take care of that and to share that and to nurture that and to make the most of that. As Viktor Frankl shared, it was the responsibility of each individual to find their own meaning in life. That this was the way that the way that ultimate freedom, this is, this is the ultimate freedom that's given to us. It can't be prescribed though. We have to find that ourselves. We have to be responsible for that ourselves. It's, our, it's not just our freedom, it's our responsibility. In fact, Frankl taught that the ultimate freedom was to be responsible for what is yours to be responsible for. And aren't these letters by Daniel Gottlieb to, to his grandson Sam, aren't they perfect? They seem perfectly in alignment to Frankl's central concept that the key to life is to find meaning despite our very real suffering. And it was this that led to us transcending to outgrowing despair, to being transformed by it, if you like. That this is our ultimate responsibility and therefore our ultimate freedom. It starts by by accepting the reality we find ourselves in. That reality that's beyond ours to change, of course. Because of course, if you can change some suffering, our responsibility is to change what that suffering, to stop that suffering. But sometimes we can't. 
we can, if we can heal the cause of the suffering, then we're, then that's our first responsibility. But sometimes we just have to accept because it cannot be changed. The serenity prayer, accept the things that cannot be changed. Sometimes that's all that there is. But we fight and we struggle and we wrestle. We find ways to change what cannot be changed instead of learning to accept what is there and working with what is there, even if that's real suffering. Brings to mind a ver the, the story of dandelions, and here's the version that I thought of throwing a bit of Nasruddin. Here's Nasruddin's version of the story of dandelions. It's a great tale. Nasruddin decide, decided to start a flower garden. He prepared the soil and planted the seeds of many beautiful flowers. But when they came up, the garden was filled not just with his chosen flowers, but also overrun by dandelions. He sought out advice from gardeners all over and tried every method known to get rid of them, but to no avail. Finally, he walked all the way to the capital city to speak to the royal gardener at the sheikh's palace. The wise old man had counselled many gardeners before and suggested a variety of remedies to expel the dandelions, but Nasruddin had tried them all. They sat together in silence for some time and finally the gardener looked at Nasruddin and said, well then, I suggest you learn to love those dandelions. You learn to love them. Sometimes that's what we've got to do to take care of our, our three millimetres. So often in life we try to change our circumstances in our pursuit of what we believe will make us happy. We attempt to, to perfect our outer or even our inner world, thinking that this will rid us of the potential troubles that accompany life. We attempt to wish our troubles away when maybe what we ought to be doing is learning to love what is there in its wholeness. Maybe we all spend too much time weeding the garden and not enough time learning to love what's already there. Maybe those dandelions are our three millimetres. And again, I'm reminded of Forest Church's mantra here. Want what you have, do what you can and be who you are which always begins by accepting who we are and actually loving who we are. Acceptance isn't enough. We have to love it, actually. And we're then better able to do what we can with what we have, our three millimetres. And this is beautifully exemplified in the following little tale. There's a wonderful ancient Jewish story about Rabbi Gamaliel. He was asked by one of his students if he thought he had done enough with his life. Ponder the question for a moment before answering. When I die, God will not ask me, Gamaliel, why were you not an Abraham or a Moses? God will ask me, were you Gamaliel? To be who we are means that we must embrace our God-given natures and our talents. It means that we accept who we are and make the most of it. It means that we do not try to be something or someone that we are not. It means that we take responsibility for what we have been gifted. Our job is to nurture and develop these gifts, but not merely for ourselves, for the good of all. As Daniel Gottlieb wrote, it's about taking care of our three millimetres, being responsible for our lives. This is the spiritual life in its entirety. It is purpose and it is what will give our lives true meaning. In so doing, we may just begin to create that kingdom of love right here, right now, with our three millimetres. That's it. That is the essence. Amen. I'm going to end with some final words of blessing. You know, we need to bless more and we can all bless. We bless by giving ourselves wholeheartedly to life. So may you return to your life with peace in your heart. Deeply regard each and all that you meet. Listen to all that speak and listen with the ears of your heart wide open. Speak your truth in love and be ready in any moment to disarm your own heart. And always live as if a realm of love had already begun. That kingdom now was three millimetres. Right here, right now, take care and nurture for them. Nurture them. And may the blessings of God go with us all. And may it do so 
in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do. Go in love, go in peace. Amen.